Well my friends, we did it. We reached the final tutorial in this Fantasy Armor series. This time I'll be showing you how to make leather gauntlets to complete the full suit of Fantasy Armor. The pattern for this project is linked below. While you are free to use other mediums, most of my tutorials will be focused on leather craft. And if you decide to make this project yourself, you'll need a reliable place from which to order leather and tools, which brings me to the sponsor of this video, Weaver Leather. The leather used in these tutorials, along with most of the tools, dyes, and other various materials can all be found at their online store. And if you use the affiliate link below, you can support this channel when you're ordering goodies for your next project. As always, the first thing to do is to print the patterns out. The hand and cuff portions of the design can be scaled to fit, while the finger portion, unless you need to make a large adjustment, it is recommended to print at a fixed 100% scale and adjust the length by adding or removing finger segments. The star at the side of each handpiece is to help keep track of the orientation because the handpieces are not symmetrical, but they're close enough to get them mixed up. The cuff section will need to be printed using the tiled pages option and taped together. See the help section on the side if you need more help printing. For this project, we'll be going with our typical vegetable tan leather for the cuff and hand pieces. Anywhere in the 10 ounce range is fine, give or take, depending on your needs and preferences. Lay out the patterns and trace. You will probably want to use a thinner leather for the fingers, but we'll be covering that a little bit later in the tutorial. Then separate the patterns for easier cutting. At this stage, I like to wet the leather with a short dunk in water to prime it for future processes. Next, we need to transfer all of the design lines in the holes. Since the gauntlet is a more intricate part, I'm going to suggest you use a hole punch to mark the holes. This will help get a more precise fit during assembly. If you want the detail features in your design, you can trace right over the paper pattern to leave a guide impression. The decoration and tooling scheme is up to you. In past tutorials, I demonstrate many possibilities, but I would like to keep the focus of this video primarily on the gauntlet construction, and in a future video I can spend the proper time to demonstrate this more fully. So if you like this design and you want to use it yourself, just keep an eye on the channel and the academy, as I'll be making many standalone videos and courses with more advanced techniques along the way. To achieve a nicer look on the gauntlets, I suggest you do a little wet forming at the bottom of the handpiece at least. Give a little shape to each knuckle. It doesn't take much, but the subtle effect will look good. For the dye, I'll be using Phoebe's Pro Red Oil dye again, so it ties in better with the previous parts. But there will be a couple of new things. One possible method for dyeing leather is called immersion dyeing. If you have the parts that are small enough, or if you have a container that's big enough, you can get a very solid even covering that is also very fast. The trade-off is that it uses a lot of dye, and you risk an inevitable catastrophe with a big spill. Just dunk the pieces briskly but carefully. If you have any parts that are too big, you can approach the dip from each side and then use an applicator to fill in the rest. To finish the pieces, I'm using Weaver's Clear Tough Coat. You can also apply finish in the same way by dunking it, but you do have to keep an eye on the finish as it dries.
Once that is dried for a bit, I'll be using some Black Phoebing's Antique Finish to add some contrast. This process is one of those really good bang for the buck techniques that adds a lot of value without a large time investment. I just generously apply the finish to the top of the entire part, and before it dries, I'll wipe away the finish from the surface, leaving behind the dark pigment in the recesses. I'm using a dauber to apply and a shop towel to remove it, but avoid normal paper towels that leave a mess of fibers behind. And I find it helpful to have two rags, with one being a mess rag to remove the majority of the excess, and a cleaner one to carefully buff the high spots. I avoid using too much pressure in buffing as I don't want to remove too much pigment in this case. And now we can begin the assembly for the cuff and hand parts. The two cuff pieces will be joined together with rivets. These pieces are not meant to lay flat, as the center section is designed to flare out slightly, and the assembly will also force the curve of the gauntlets. You may also want to attach snaps or buckles to the cuffs at this stage. If you do not have any tools to help you set rivets like the anvils or foot press, you can always set them flat from the inside. Attaching the wrist and hand parts will be done with Chicago screws. They fit together in the same order they are laid out in the pattern PDF. Later you will need to glue all of the screws, but wait until you're finished and happy with the final assembly a bit later. Now we can move on to the finger parts for the gauntlets. This design calls for segmented overlapping layers that I will refer to as scales, and these will be mounted on flexible strips of leather. Let's start with the strips first. I'm using 3-4 to four ounce kangaroo leather. It's incredibly strong even in a very thin thickness. Or you can also grab some 5-6 to six ounce pre-dyed leather or even just normal vegetable tan leather. 
Just avoid anything stretchy or weak. I'll start by cutting a few one inch straps, and then I'll mark the finger sections carefully. I'll use that to make the pattern for the rest of the strips. This is a good practice when making multiples because normal paper patterns will wear out. You'll need to determine how many finger scales you will need for each finger. I provide a recommendation on the pattern, but just test out each finger, at least on one hand, just to be sure. You will have a little wiggle room, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But if a full scale length extends over the end of the finger, you may want to remove one space. Or if the last scale comes short of the end of the finger, add a length. If you're making this to fit over a glove, make sure to wear it while fitting the fingers. To make the scales, I'm using vegetable tan leather, about 4 ounces, and it's a bit too thin to be honest. I would have used about 6, maybe a little more, but I didn't have it on hand when I started due to shipping delays. So if you're going for a pure costume grade, 4 ounce is probably the thinnest you'd want to go. And you'll probably want to save some time by pre-punching a bunch of blanks. I suggest using a strap-in cutter to do some of the heavy lifting here. For a beginner with very few tools, strap-in cutters can be a big investment. But if you don't have them, don't worry, it's still fine. It's a fantastic opportunity to get practice with many small repetitive cuts. At least that's what you should tell yourself when you start to cry and your hands are bleeding. Moving on. The scale paper pattern that you print out initially will not be sufficient to trace all of the pieces. I suggest something a little more substantial, like either a poster board as shown here where I make a new pattern, or thin cardboard, or reinforce the paper pattern with tape. To make a new pattern, I am folding a piece of the poster board in half for symmetry, and punching the holes evenly, and adding a couple extra notches with the hole punch for decoration. Just keep in mind that only 10 of the scales need additional Chicago screw holes up at the top. After tracing this to all of the blanks, I'll start punching the holes, and when that is done, I'll trim out the rest with leather shears. Is it just me or does this look like some kind of oh no face? Like a character from something? I don't know. Anyway. At this point it's probably a good idea to go ahead and do a loose assembly of at least a few of the fingers and double check the length.
When you do finally finish all of the scales, just give them a quick dunk in the dye, and then when they dry, give them a quick sheen. While the sheen was drying, I gave each piece a slight bit of shape. For this design, I went with finger loops. There are certainly more complex alternatives that you can use, but this is more effective than you might expect and simplifies the crafting process. And it makes it easy enough to switch out gloves or even go without gloves whenever you want. These are also made with the thin kangaroo leather and I'll fit it to each finger with the glove of choice being worn. If you never plan on wearing gloves, feel free to fit it to your bare hands. Now for the assembly, I'm using a small rivet at the base of the finger strap, then attaching one end of the finger loop and topping off the sandwich with the finger scale. I will set the rivet cap and repeat the configuration on the other side to close the loop. This blocks off the rivet a little, so you have to coerce the loop a little off to the side to get at the rivet. I find that if you angle the loop forward towards the tip a bit, you can get at the rivet easier and leave a taper in the opening of the loop, which makes it easier to slip your fingers in later as well. Then it's smooth sailing from there. Just attach each finger scale one by one, remembering to save the scales with the extra hole for the top of each finger. Now we're in the home stretch. Since I'm using very thin strapping and a very thin scale, I have to use a very thin rivet. If you go with the thicker scales as I suggested earlier, you'll be fine with something like the small rivets that Weaver offers for the finger scales, and mediums for everything else. Now that the fingers are all done, you can begin attaching them to the hand parts. These are designed to attach very simply with a Chicago screw at the tip of each knuckle. In order to make the gauntlet fit firmly, you'll need to add some straps across the palms and around the base of the thumbs. I'm using the kangaroo leather here again due to its strength, while still being supple and thin. I find the easiest way to do this is to make a hole on a longer piece of the strap, then attach it to one side of the hand. Then snug the strap across the palm, and mark where the second hole in the strap will fall. And for the thumb strapping, I suggest using the screw on the second segment and snugging the strap up over the thumb. This stage is important for comfort and fit, so take your time to get the straps at a good spot.
If you haven't already, you'll want to add some sort of closure for the cuff. I'm using snaps here for a sleek look, but you can also use buckle straps or lace or other various hardware options if you prefer. And just to tie everything together, I'll add some antique to the fingers just like I did in the other pieces. And we're done. One thing you'll notice is that the gauntlet isn't quite big enough for my hands, and that's okay because these aren't made for me. I'm more of the Sasquatch variety, and thus none of the items that I make as demos for you guys at default scale will ever fit me, sadly. If I were to make these for myself, I would probably scale them up by 8-10%. to So if you too are of a different than average size, just scale the patterns up or down as necessary. Although this is the last tutorial video in the Fantasy Armor series, I do expect to make a recap video and give extra tips about creating your full suit and putting all the components together. And I'll also make more tutorials and patterns in the future. And in the meanwhile, I will also be working on a number of freemium courses that'll show you how to take your armor making, leather crafting, and designs to the next level. So I'll be looking for your support to help make those possible. If you found these tutorials useful or entertaining, it'd be awesome if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe. And finally, thank you to all of the patrons to help support these digital efforts. Recently I've simplified the tiers on Patreon, and there's a lot of great behind the scenes and early access content. And the Academy tier supporters also get the latest patterns included in their perks. I hope you'll consider joining us there. Thank you guys so much for coming along on these tutorials. It's been great to have you. And I hope those of you who are using the patterns really enjoy them. Till next time, take care everybody.